So we move on then to Futility by Wilfred Owen. Excellent poem, very, very short, but very, very rich and detailed. We start then with the structure, and we've got, first and foremost, we've got instructions at the beginning of both stanzas, which is very interesting. The first one is obviously a command to move the person into the sun, and the second one is much more futile, much more ridiculous, thinking that the person will be woken or empowered or regenerated somehow by the sun when obviously that person is is dying and um the person speaking here is probably going to be the general the commanding officer speaking to uh or sorry no, probably not general the commanding officer speaking to the troops and obviously this is one of the troops thoughts owen's here is like owen here is actually um the, the the person thinking about it so they move him into the sun and then the person hears or think how it wakes the seeds you know maybe just trying to rally the troops you know give them some kind of hope give them something to look forward to but we can see in this you know it's, it's quite ridiculous and fanciful and futile and um you know it's not really something that a person in their in their right mind in a normal situation would actually think or believe you wouldn't compare the, the raising of seeds to the raising of human beings but uh the, the person does it here and again it's just kind of a very futile idea coming through and, and that echoes first and foremost the, the poem you've got the tone change from the very beginning you know it seems very gentle and uh, kind of loving and caring and the sun seems is in very positive images about the sun and how it's always kind of been there for the person and woke them etc but uh here we have the first line of discontent in the fact that it's not going to happen and then even though there's a little hope in the sun afterwards what happens in the second stanza is very kind of damning of the sun and its power and its power to do anything which is again the idea of you know fertility futility and hope uh futility in thinking that you know something you know that something good could could come out of the situation and this is where i suppose i have to kind of mention the reference the sun being perhaps god and obviously the way maybe god has left this situation or god has left them to fend for themselves or god is not actually um looking after this person you, you can read it that way and we'll come to that idea a little a little um a little I think a little later on sorry um we've also got the list of questions at the end which are very powerful because obviously they're what's left with us you know the, the, what we think about how futile and terrible and how weak the sun is and how this is um you know it's not worth human life because you know man wasn't created as it says here for, sorry so this basically means um was this what man was created for you know just to die on foreign fields for a strange cause or you know really it was ridiculous then it was it would be a ridiculous thing for the sunbeams to have worked so hard to put life on earth if this is all it was going to be for so the tone and the questions there give us the idea that, and also that there's no more suggestions here we have you know the idea here that there's something that we can do and here's that something we can hope in but then towards the end here straight after that you know we've got no more answers or no more options there's nothing we can do you know we just think about how pointless this all was so obviously the tone change and through the list of questions the rhetorical questions and the list of three obviously three questions um in a row you know just really gets thinking about all the different sides of it so the first one is thinking about the lack of power the sun has and this one is the futility of you know man's life and then this is the futility of you know all life on earth so obviously the three build there in the list to it to make it more powerful Looking then at the meanings, well, obviously it's the futility of war because uh, this person's you know lost their life, you know they've left their home where you know they were gently woken all the time and it would they would had um, seems like a you know a promising life. Obviously the whispering of fields unsown that could that could be it could be several references here. You know it could be the work he had to do that he had to leave it could be future plans you know that he never actually got to to, to fill it could be the family that he never got to have so you can look at unsown and, and really analyze it but again because of the war um he's he's not managed to do all, all of this because he's died somewhere in france and that shows how futile the war is it's, it's just pointless it's it's not really what humans and obviously this whole last section here uh, it's not really what humans were designed for it's a waste we got the idea here of um memories um the main one being obviously the the memory of france uh sorry the memory of the life back home before he's actually got to france and obviously his life there and how much more pleasurable it was and obviously the relationship he had with the sun and perhaps the relationship he had with god you know before certain things were challenged but the other memory that we have here is obviously one of uh human history you know or you know human theology at least and the idea of you know man grow growing into into the current state he is you know for however many you know, millions of years or 
thousands of years, depending on what, what your personal beliefs are, um, and how this, um, you know, was it, the, the memory of it being something, humanity being something great and something that you really was set to achieve and something that was really going to be, um, be you know, exceptional on the earth. But then look what it's been reduced to, you know, being taking part in this in this war, which is, which is. Um, which is you know just wasted another life so we've got the idea of uh, belief and the idea of losing faith and obviously this ties in massively to the to god and the sun so here you know you know maybe god was in this person's life you know he actually felt how close it was to him and obviously the personification there kind of aids that reading because you've got the idea of perhaps you know the spirit um the spirit the spirit talking to god or you obviously people sorry spirit the spirit of god talking to people or the idea of you know people feeling connected to god and it's quite common for people to believe that um you know uh, religious elements do speak to them especially within the christian faith so you know people might feel that they have a connection because of that and that was his connection there and obviously the personification again you know the kind old son obviously giving god uh, an age there obviously being massively old and obviously the kindness is what we normally associate with the idea of god um and so they believe that you know god here will 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 um help him in some way and also the reference to the fact that throughout history you know the sun's been worshipped by countless countless um uh, communities and, and generations so it could it could well be taken that way if you want to but obviously this person that he might believe that for a while but then he loses faith because uh, he does no longer believes in the power that this cold star now has and the fact that it's called a cold star is interesting because it says it has all this power but it's not being kind or warm or warm with it and warm obviously there is not just in terms of heat but warm in a generosity you know it's not giving life to this person also uh, the line straight afterwards our limbs so dear achieved our, our sides full nerves still warm too hard to stir that's a really powerful line because the person's there looking at the body and this is probably one of the one of the really interesting points where we echo the loss of faith the person's looking at the body and they're saying look these limbs you know with all the sinews and muscles and blah blah blah, are so amazingly created you know this worth so much and the sides you know they're not missing anything he's still got his limbs they're still fully nerved they could still do everything communicate with the brain that they should and they're still warm there's still blood flowing through them is this too hard for god to stir is it too hard for god to actually you know just give this person another chance another life how easy would it be for god to do that and yet god doesn't do it so here we can have the idea of him losing faith uh, in um in uh, in god if if we if we're taking the reading of, of god at least but at least you know if anything we're losing faith in humanity you know the fact that you know people can do this to each other and leave each other in this situation yeah, situation and then we've got the bitterness really coming through, um, especially in the last line. Obviously, it kind of seeds its way in, sorry, weaves its way in all through the the last stanza uh and just here in this first one until this mo until this morning and this snow so this is the morning that the person dies and obviously the bitterness in there and this snow they're stuck in the snow you know they're not actually you will believe it's a the snowy trench but also the snow is an idea of you know things fading away you know snow never really lasts it's it's not kind of long standing snow always melts so here's this person the snow is representing the person's um kind of life force and and then obviously the decay and uh, the slipping away of the person's the person's life and obviously the cold or the idea of the cold and the snow as well references the cold um, lack of generosity from god being being given from 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 the sun we've also got um so yeah so that was a bitterness and we've also got the this last one you know this is a really really great line as well uh, what made foolish or, or silly sunbeams work so hard to break the inanimation the lack of the sorry the the, <laughs> the inanimate earth so why would the sunbeams give earth life if this is what it was going to do so again the kind of bitterness is showing there you know he's just he doesn't see a point in life in general there's no point in life at all being around if if this is all that's going to happen so we move on then to images and obviously you've got this kind of sun uh or, and obviously i should put in as well the idea of god and the lack of the lack of, and its lack of and its power or lack of power so obviously we have the kind of positive references to the sun and god or god should i say at the beginning <coughs> 
<laughs> how it always woke him, you know, gave him life at the beginning, you know, brought him from his sleep. But then we have the lack of power in that uh, it's no longer choosing to do it. And um, the reference to the, the, the pointlessness, if, if God was going to create something so tall and, and splendid and splendid and wondrous, you know, why let it rot like this? You know, why let them all go to waste? You could look at that. We've got the image of the kindness in the dying moment where they've moved this person into the sun. It's just kind of very nice, you know, a last thing to actually kind of bring the person into a, a positive state and again try and help the person. Um, we've got the image of farm life and um, I should actually add one to this as well. I'm going to add it. We've got the image of farm life and the... Um, the, you know the wonderful life he had back home and the reason i've picked this one is because we've got this idea of the fields unsown and i think that's obviously it could be literal you know in terms of you know he might have been a farmer and this is work he had to do so you can take it that way but it also could be the fields unsown it could be his uh, metaphor for his potential you know the whole life he was going to lead and everything he was going to have and how powerful it was and it could be whispering of fields unsown in the um also in uh, a family uh he was going to he was going to have and, and, and develop etc so that the idea there of the the farm life you know it's it kind of re re resembles more than just it literally being on a farm it's um it's uh the idea of just his life you know the way it was supposed to pan out not dying on a field in france and obviously the contrast with that with his current situation you know the you know, the son gently waking him before he kind of goes on with his work and now he's just dying in the snow it's a it's a huge contrast there uh, and again, obviously, that's a very futile waste of life. Um, here we've got the idea, perhaps of perhaps of evolution as well. It's um, the idea, you know, the, the growing tall bit. Obviously, is a reference from the um, evolutional chart that shows the common ancestors we had with um, with certain primates. Obviously, excuse me, I don't know the names of them, but as far back as we go, I think there's you know, six or seven that uh, that actually kind of <clears throat> go along there. In fact, if you find it, there's a picture which has a great kind of addition to it. It's got the the seven or the six or seven, you know, different states that the, the the from which humans have developed or their answers developed from and then it's got uh, an addition at the end where instead of like a man you know with the last one is man fully formed you've got another one of uh, a man crouching facing the rest of it and then firing back at them and it's kind of showing you know that we're going to destroy the earth so that's a that's a sorry i don't know why i threw that in there but anyway if you find the picture it's, it's worth worth thinking about so the idea there of the evolution or obviously the uh, genesis the idea of uh, um, man's first creation and uh, how how he was created from clay um, and obviously the person we bear the clay is really important in terms of images because obviously the person is returning to the ground is going to die again uh, which again kind of links to the futility what's the point of bringing him up from the ground if he's just going to go back into the ground in a in a horrible way um, looking at the language then we've got several things we've got the oxymoron of the cold star which is a really really interesting image because the star should be massively powerful, massively warm. And obviously what we're looking for here is like a warm touch of life. But this star is choosing to be cold at this time. And obviously the reference isn't to a cold star in temperature. It's just in it's not giving life at this very, very moment. And obviously when he refers to it earlier, he says, calls it the kind old sun. And very soon his bitterness and the futility of having any hope in the kind old sun, he suddenly just turns it, a, calls it a cold star. Um, so really it sounds like, you know, the star isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. Soon after we've got, oh, sorry, just before actually we've got the personification um, of the sun, again, in perhaps God. Obviously, it whispers here and it touches him. And that's kind of a very kind of personal image. You know, it's it's almost loving and caring and gentle. So, again, it ties in with the with the, the setup of the poem. You know, the first few lines kind of show this kindness and then it just makes the bitterness all the more strong because of the. Um, yeah, because we had that, you know, opposing contrast at the beginning. And then we've got rhetorical questions at the end, which I've gone over a couple of times. You know, remember they build, um, they build, and obviously they're 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 very kind of bitter, and they make us question life and humanity and the point of it all. And obviously that's it shows us the futility, and and obviously the the i the the, the ways that the sad and tragic things in war happen, the ways that they can actually make us feel. And then we've got the um, the word him referred to right at the beginning. Move him into the sun and uh, it gently woke him and again it always woke him and the idea you know it's not my friend or my dear one or you know john etc you know it's just him it's everyone or anyone that dies in war so it's a very encompassing poem it's not just about this one event that he experiences you know there's people all across you know the world in, in battles etc you're feeling the same thing losing the same um the same uh, 
losing the same amount, you know, in a human life. So the effect on the reader then, well, reader then, well, it really lets us think about the loss of life and how how life isn't really valued in the scenarios and how people actually, you know, uh, die. Um, there's actually a brilliant piece in, I don't know if you've read the book Birdsong uh, by Sebastian Folks. There's a really, really interesting scene in it where he sends, I think it's like 20,000 men, you know, down a hill to try and attack someone and then they just get gunned down and obliterated. And then he writes that at that point, he, the, the general who, who led, who, sorry, who commanded the troops down had just seen them just get obliterated and he just rips his uh, crucifix from his neck and uh, throws it to the ground. Uh, that's what my memory recalls it anyway. And it's just the idea of how, how, um, you know how how damning and how futile the the loss of life is and obviously that's really been echoed here even though it's only been echoed in, in one person um then we've got the effects on the reader we've got the sacrifice of war you know what people are willing to go through because this person you know still would have signed up to war and you know wanted to make a difference and perhaps you know been sold a lie and told that it was glamorous and things would be good and you know he'd be okay in it but obviously that's not how it works out but uh, it, it's it's a huge sacrifice uh, that people were willing to make it makes us think about the sacrifice that people did make you know millions of millions of people um you know died and that's obviously why we have the uh, remembrance sunday uh to commemorate that and, and honor that uh, again remembering that sacrifice and people people referred to in this poem and obviously you know Owen himself and uh, it reminds us and makes us think about the last moments in a person's life you know what's what's gonna what are they gonna be like you know who's gonna be around who's gonna be there with you where will you be you know will you be dying in you know the the kind of comfort of your own home with loved ones around you passing off um, painlessly in your sleep or you know you've just been you know under attack of some kind and and, and then uh, just die with uh, with uh, die in, in a field in a, in a foreign land so yeah it just gets you thinking about last moments as well so like i said yeah, there's so much more you can actually pick on it and there's loads of uh, analysis available all over the internet etc so obviously whatever your teacher's done with you and hopefully something i've said here has been of use but then just you know keep adding to it because the wider your knowledge of of all not this poem and all the poems you know the better prepared you're going to be for any kind of question that that comes up